Quick Slants is presented by your local New England Honda dealers. I mean, that's really the choice that's confronting the Patriots right now. You know when they get the menu and everything just looks so good? I mean, you can't go wrong. You love it all. That's the place you want to be. You don't want to be in the other place, the place where whatever you order, you're going to start with, uh, I guess I'll have the Drake May or, uh, you know, give me the McCarthy. Or we'll have the Mac Jones. Remember that? Bill Belichick going around the room. We're getting the Jones. We're getting the Jones. You guys good if we just order the Jones? Okay, we'll have the Jones for the table. Do the Patriots want to order one of everything? I mean, do they like those guys that much? Or are they sitting there fretting about ingredients? I bring in my guy, Andrew Callahan, right now to ask what his sense is of how much or little the Patriots are going to like the items. Tom, they're in the right place. They're at the steakhouse. This is a quarterback's draft. They need the quarterback. They're looking at the menu. The issue is, do you want to go filet? Would you rather go with the ribeye? Or, mm -hmm. as you've suggested, trade back for the Wagyu burger, throw in a nap, and a dessert. I know for a fact multiple people within the organization feel good about Drake May and Jaden Daniels at number three. Uh, but we'll see, because there's still time until that pick comes. And then closing hard on the outside is it's J.J. McCarthy week is basically what it has amounted to. We're going to get to all that in just a second. Good to have you, Andrew. Meanwhile, here's a game plan. Drake versus J.J. will go in-depth in the second block. Ask for everything. OTAs underway. I can't remember what that is. Uh, OTAs are underway, and we have a one-on-one -on -one with Hunter Henry. As a result of that, saw him today. Time now, though, for Quick Fire. It's presented by your local New England Honda dealers. Jabril Peppers today was speaking with us, and here's what he had to say about, well, the change of foot. Mayo is a great, great coach, and so is Bill, you know, and I, I, I don't like to make comparisons because that's the, you know, that's the thief for joy, but, you know, it, th what he did worked, you know. It, it was a dynasty here, and you know, like all things, you know, change is good. So I'm excited to see what you know Mayo and his guys can do. You know, go out there and you know play my ass off for him. We are hearing unqualified takes, and there's a qualification there and just a nod to Bill, but unqualified opinions offered by player after player about change is good. Change is good. We need a change. We like the atmosphere. We are, and that's the way this should have been done from the start, right? Whether it was Mayo, Elliot Wolf, hit the qualifiers, pay your respects to Bill, then get on to the change. But look, as someone who, as a five-year-old, cried because we changed the family car, uh, I'm not really qualified to say all change <laughs> is good. I do think, though, this will be a positive change. Hunter Henry said he could already tell today, through two days of voluntary off-season program workouts and classroom work, things are different. I think this is good. We just got to remember, there will be growing pains. There will most definitely be growing pains, and that's for the players, and that's for the coaching staff, and Gerard Mayo, too. Meanwhile, I want you guys to take, check this out. This is what the uh, San Francisco's 49ers gave up when they wanted to go to three, just three years ago, to take a guy named Trey Lance. They gave up the number 12. They also gave up a third in that 2021 draft. Then they gave up two more first-rounders for the opportunity to draft a guy in Trey Lance who played at North Dakota State, played one game in his final year at the, uh, at the college because of COVID, and he just hasn't worked out. So to me, I have been told, my sense is, the Patriots are going to ask for a much bigger booty than what the San Francisco 49ers had to give up. And I don't think they're unreasonable to do so because these three quarterbacks who are going to be at three, or at least two of them, which will still be sticking around, whether it's McCarthy and May or Daniels is in the mix. They're better players than what we were looking at in the top three previously. They absolutely are. And I would go to another trade last year for a defensive end, Will Anderson. Houston got the same deal, arguably better, uh, or gave up to Arizona for that pick to go back up and get Will Anderson. So I think, look, this is a seller's market. And number three, you should ask for everything. If they say, well, we'll give you just three first-round picks, you say, go to hell. Come back with an extra first, and then we'll talk. Because we always talk about three first-round picks, but it's really a swap. What you're really getting are the two extras. To me, if they're mm -hmm. going to be the later part of the round, that's not enough to pass up a potential franchise quarterback. No, you're giving something up. 
in moving back. You're getting a right. first round pick back, but you're moving down multiple spots. So it has to be sweet. Is there anything that would move you off your spot if you were the Patriots? If they got to four, five, what would it take? Are you a no sell? I I'm a no sell. But look, if you're going to come at me about four first round picks, combination of five, and it's a mix of first and seconds, I'm at least going to have a meeting. And I think Elliot Wolf should. We've heard collaboration. Just sit down, talk about it, the value of those, because then that gives you ammo, right, to jump back into maybe pick four or five or six, all of which I think could be up for grabs and trades uh, here in a couple of weeks. All right, good deal. Now, meanwhile, Kyle Duggar, a second round pick in 2020. Here's what he uh, signed for this week uh, an average, approximate annual value contract. It'll put him sixth among safeties in the NFL, 14.3 million CAAV. So basically what we kind of expected it to be, um, a little richer than pro football focus projected it at. They had it around 13.5, but to me, it's not an overpay. It wasn't an overpay last summer where I had a very similar contract projection myself, which I don't say to pat on my back, but I, I say to mention that was a time when Duggar's stock was higher. He mm -hmm. had a little bit of a dip last season. Now he's 28. The contract he got, I thought, when they had cleared out the entire market, and I can tell you Kyle Duggar never got another formal offer since he received the, the transition tag, uh, was a bit more than I expected. But look, if you're going to overpay, make it sure you're a team with a ton of cap space. It's a homegrown guy and a homegrown guy who's bought in and been a good player for you. Yeah, it's really interesting to see the homegrown guys that the Patriots are retaining now. Meanwhile, here's a guy that they actually brought in. It's K.J. Osborne, wide receiver, who was with the Vikings. Here's what his former quarterback, Kirk Cousins, had to say about him. K.J. is a receiver who was with us in Minnesota, who was kind of in the shadow of Jefferson and Thielen, and I always felt like K.J. was better than the opportunities he got. He went to free agency, went to New England, and I'd love to see him have a huge year. Kind of a bigger role than he would have had in Minnesota to show what he can do. All right, Andrew, is K.J. Osborne going to be the number one wideout for New England in 2024? I hope not. Uh, Tom, he's a big slot. He got enough of those here, right? It's Juju Smith-Schuster. It's Kendrick Bourne who can play also outside. And K.J. Osborne's played some outside. But there's a reason I think he was freed up for 540 receiving yards each of the last three seasons. It's because of Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen. And he was facing the number three corner. I think he might have the same stats, but it's going to come at a much worse efficiency because he doesn't have those players pulling coverage, pulling the best defensive players. And he's not in the exact fit here. He's going to have to share time with DeMario Douglas, Bourne, and Juju in the slot. All right, Andrew, we've spent about 93% of our time discussing quarterbacks. We've spent about 5% of our time discussing wide receivers. We've probably devoted 2% of our time to other positions. These are the three sneaky needs that I see. And tackles in there, the other group, too. These are three sneaky needs I, I see for the Patriots. You have an older Judon. You have Anthony Jennings, who played out of his mind last year. You have Christian Gonzalez, who's a shutdown corner. But you need help. On the other side from Christian Gonzalez, I think, in terms of trying to be an elite pairing, your thoughts on what the sneakiest or the most dire of all sneaky needs is? Well, first of all, my thought is I don't want to tell Keon White in person that you left him off of the edge list. You can do that to one of the most terrifying human beings well, in the Patriots locker room. <laughs> Keon White He's and Dietrich Wise. Look, I, I feel good. He plays both. Uh, about edge, the depth, the top end talent with Judon coming back, where I don't feel good is corner. Jonathan Jones is about to turn 31 by week three this season. History is not kind to cornerbacks on the other side of 30. If he falters, we're talking about the same corners playing opposite Christian Gonzalez who played last year. Alex Austin and Sean Wade. Very nice guys. Young players. Not starters I want to see for a potential top five defense next season. All right. We do line it up on third down. It's going to be Jude on Anuche. We'll see. All right, meanwhile, it's from the stands. I pose the same question to you people out there. And you are, as always, outstanding about getting back to me. And look at the contesting of the three positions that could be the biggest pressing needs outside the ones we already know. And walking away with it was surprisingly to me, tight end. Oh. 35.8. Then we had edge. Then we had corner. Tim says edge because Judon is getting older and Uche is here on a one-year deal. We don't really know where White slots in yet either. He's talking about Keon, your guy, meanwhile, and he's a great player. Uh, cornerback, last three years, the only healthy cornerback at the end of the year was Miles Bryant. He's gone. He has gone to Houston. Uh, meanwhile, the Patriots are and have been desperate for a young, talented tight end for a while now. Correct. 
Kevin Asiasi, Dalton Keene didn't live up to that. Meanwhile, my guy Harry Mann Jr. says with all the sophisticated passing games in the National Football League, you can never have enough corners. Having Gonzalez back next season will help, but you can add some corner depth in the later rounds. Yeah, you can. And this is, again, it's a good cornerback draft as well. Andrew, we've already talked tackle. We've already talked offensive tackle. We've obviously talked quarterback. Where do you think the Patriots will start to go later in the draft? Will they keep loading up on offensive line, or will they get on the defensive side? I think they will get to the defensive side, and it's not only just corner, the stuff that I talked about, uh, and great call there, Harry. It's a bigger corner, right? Like Marcus Jones is going to play nickel, but he's 5'8". Jonathan Jones is 5'9". Alex Austin, Sean Wade, and the wrong side is six foot. Like, these are players you can't rely on to play in the outside. Like Christian Gonzalez, you get a big athletic corner, even if he's developmental, who can play and start a couple of games. That's a huge win on day three. You know, there are tight ends kicking around, too. There yeah. are some really interesting, productive tight ends kicking around in this draft. Uh, meanwhile, coming back after the break, we're going to talk about Drake May and J.J. McCarthy in some real depth. So don't move. Quick Slants is brought to you in part by Dr. Matthew Lopresti, the hair doctor of Tom Curran. Growth potential brought to you by Dr. Matthew Lopresti. Look younger, feel younger, get your hair back with Leonard Hair Transplant Associates. Check this out. Simple stats for the two quarterbacks who most likely will be sitting there at three, but hey, anything could happen, though, at number two. But check it out. Obviously, way more throws and passing yards from Drake May, a much more efficient player, was J.J. McCarthy. Now it's time, ladies and gentlemen, for my slant. Watch out! I want you to do me a favor, a hypothetical, if you will. Picture this. It's October 2026. You coach a team, and you're down 24-20. There's a minute 30 remaining. You get the ball at your own 25. You're playing in the Armageddon Bowl, and the fate of the world rests on the outcome. Who do you want at quarterback? Remember, it's October 26. You want Drake May? You want Jaden Daniels? You want J.J. McCarthy? But you have to project now. Who's gotten better? Who's gotten hurt? Who's already on his way to quarterback limbo where the Darnolds and the Max and the Justin Fields and Trey Lances live? This is the essence of what the Patriots are trying to decide. Right now, to me, you'd want Jaden Daniels out there. Most mobile, best passer. To me, that's a layup. But in two seasons, who's the best? How many times have the Patriots pointed to Drake May's high ceiling? as if he is going to be, if he reaches it, better than all of them. He should be on his way there by 26. Meanwhile, Daniels, how brittle will he be? How will he play in the cold? McCarthy? That's the issue. Nobody really grasps how athletic J.J. McCarthy is and the fact that he won like nobody else, but there's less usage. We bring in Merrill Hodge, former ESPN analyst, who I spoke to this week on the Patriots Talk podcast about these guys, Drake and J.J. To make kid get you fired, um, I wouldn't touch him. Okay, let's let's talk about the two things I just mentioned: processing and accuracy. I cannot think of somebody as erratic as I have seen. I mean, in every level, you know, people um, bring up Josh Allen all of the time, mm -hmm. and Josh Allen. That is, they are one hundred percent incorrect. What are your thoughts on J.J. McCarthy, and what would you do if you are the Patriots at number three? Okay, um, J.J. McCarthy is okay. Okay, he's just okay. And, and here's here's where I, I think that teams, where's where, I just think you have to have a bigger vision than one draft, this draft, and this is it. All right, Merrill Hodge does have a tendency to hate quarterbacks, and he hates on them good. But he also gets it right. C.J. Stroud and Joe Burrow, those are the only guys he thought were a cut above everybody else. And what have they proven to be? A cut above in the recent years. So let's take a look at this. One more thing. We want to take a look at these little statistical cards made up for Drake May and J.J. McCarthy. And let's bring Andrew in here as well and leave this up for a minute because there's a lot of intel here. You look at the usage rate, much higher for Drake May. He threw more. He was the fifth quarterback in usage rate in uh, FBS. Look at the other numbers, though. Look at the right in J.J. McCarthy. You can look at the similarities. Who's he like? Bryce Young, Christian Ponder, Jordan Love. Who's the other guy like? Well, he's got similarities to Locker, <laughs> Justin Fields, eh, and Joe Burrow. So you add all that up, 
And what are you seeing, Andrew, when you look at those two, two things? Well, first and foremost, I see two first-round quarterbacks. And I also wonder what Drake May did to Merrill Hodge. Did he steal oh, the fat tie? To be the seal in the seal in the alley. And there's Drake May dead on the other side. No, look, I, I think these are excellent quarterbacks. I think those are good contextualized stats to some degree. And others make me go, well, how do we account for UNC having poor pass protection and J.J. McCarthy playing with the best roster in college football? And we can isolate some of their skill sets. McCarthy, as you said, not getting enough credit for how athletic he is, how accurate he is. But there are other parts of the game not highlighted there. And when you look at the big picture, getting back to your question, mm -hmm. who do you want one of the game? Ball, 90 seconds left. For the fate of the world, give me Drake May in three years. There's not a throw he can't make. He is accurate with an adjusted completion percentage over 75% both years, he protects the ball better than J.J. McCarthy did last mm -hmm. year. And these are things that are getting overlooked in the whole process, especially as we get into my favorite time of year, silly season. I don't know if he, if he protects the ball better. That really makes me sweat for J.J. because I saw some sloppiness. We did the poll question. It's a bonus poll question. You get the ball at the 20 with a minute 30 left. We had an NCAA uh, logo there. That thing looks like Pac-Man. Anyway, this was another very close vote. 40.8% of you said that in two years, October 2026, you would want Drake May playing quarterback for you. 39.8% said Daniels. Only 20% said J.J. McCarthy. We got three comments. Here they come. Stefano, for one game, it's Jaden. Next 10 to 15, it is May. I don't trust Jaden to be durable. Kind of in the same boat with you, Stefano. Stefano. Uh, uh, Brad Whitaker, J.J. is the only proven quarterback in this situation, attributing his work in the college football playoffs. Meanwhile, Ethan Johnson, I voted Mc May, but McCarthy, again, only one that's proven in this type of game situation. Say what you want about his play, but he knows what it takes in the big games and moments. All right, coming up, well, today and on Thursday, Tom Cameron's Patriots Talk podcast. Much more of my conversation with Merrill Hodge, the full Hunter Henry conversation. Scan the QR code on your screen. Find it on your favorite podcasting app or on YouTube. We got Henry coming up after the break. We're going to say goodbye to Andrew Callahan. He is from the Boston Herald. He has a great Drake May breakdown that I want you to look at. Also, Doug Kai did a bang up one as well. Check him out. And gentlemen, I am here with the most reliable offensive weapon the Patriots have had in the passing game over the past two years. It's Hunter Henry. It's good that you're back, I think, because you have been reliable. Why did you resign? I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to be part of the change. Love Mayo. Um, I love this place. I love this organization. And uh, it means a lot to me. So I wanted to be here to be a part of that change, part of the new era, basically, with Mayo. Um, and I'm excited. Why do you love it? I mean, I, you know, there's, it's a different place. You grew up in Arkansas. It's different here. Yeah, I mean, obviously I had two kids here, uh, so I think that's always it's always a special place to me. Um, but this, you know, organization has a lot of history, a mm -hmm. lot of culture. I've, I, you know, I, I feel like I blended with the culture in, in so many ways, um, and I, I've loved it from the start. And uh, you know, some might call me crazy in that way, and in, in, in some things, but I've loved it. I've loved the fans. I love the passion of the city. Um, I always kind of thrived off that. Nice. All right. Well, what's different here within the facility now with a legend, Bill Belichick, not coaching, and Gerard Mayo in his first year? What do you sense differently? Yeah, I mean, Bill, um, it was an honor to play for him, and uh, it was it was a, a lot of fun for me. I mean, it was – every day was – felt like I learned a ton mm -hmm. over the last three years. Um, Mayo, I always had a respect for him, just watching from afar, him as a coach. But he, he brings a lot of energy. He's been in our shoes. He's a player, um, also coach. So he kind of sees both sides of it. So I'm excited to kind of see that blossom um, with him as head coach. You were at the podium for a second. You said things are different for sure. In what ways are you noticing, hey, this is it's a different vibe, it's a different feel, and is that better in, in, some, in all ways, or are there some ways it could be a little tighter? Uh, no, I, I think it's good. Um, like I said, Mayo brings a lot of energy, and I think that energy is good, man. We can feed off that, and I think that all the guys are excited to play for him. I mean, he is a guy that, like I said, been in our shoes, knows you know what it takes. Um, he's you know won at a high level as a player. Um, you know, had a lot of success as a coach. So um, he's a guy that we're excited to play for and, and go out there and compete. How's your knee? 
See, I said ACL. I don't think I was right. You guys can talk about injuries now. I checked. <laughs> <laughs> my knee. Oh, my, my knee's good. Uh, awesome. Everything's good. It was something minor at the end of the year. It just kind of lined up with the end of the year, how the season went. I, it was kind of literally right at my recovery time. I was close to playing, at, playing at the end, but everything feels great. Good deal. Now, you have been part of the drafting of Justin Herbert, Mac Jones, and there's a strong chance that you will be part of another first round quarterback being selected by your team. What goes into, what are the ways a quarterback can succeed? What can you do as a player to make that first round quarterback at ease and fit in? Man, I think with any quarterback, uh, tight end can be your best friend. Um, you know, I feel like we're reliable, middle of the field. Um, throw it in the area you know we make a play for them make it easy on them calm them down there's so many intangibles even off the field and just like you know keep picking guys up mm -hmm. um and just trying to keep guys going but it, you know I, obviously i played with two really really good uh rookie quarterbacks and had some success um so it's definitely a thing that can happen um you know, I, I play with really, like I said, two good ones, and so it, it'll be exciting if it happens. The resiliency. Last question on this, because I know you're talking out of your lane a little bit, but the resiliency at that position, when you're on a building team, is immense. So, is that one of the components of mental and physical toughness that a player is going to need to succeed? Every, I know the caveat of every position needs that, but this one in particular. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's huge in any position. Um, we, like you said, we all need it, but that position is huge. I mean, you, there's a lot that falls on their shoulders. I mean, obviously, they're praised when things go well, but, you know, they're dogs when things aren't going well. So You, you notice know, that? You that got, happened. Oh, no, I've seen it, man. I've seen it. I've seen it firsthand all, all the time, too. I mean, through the years. I mean, it's just kind of what the position is, man. I mean, they have the ball in their hands on every play, so, I mean, they impact the game in a lot of ways. And you got to be tough. Um, so, But you also need guys around you that can pick you up when, when you're down, um, you know, keep you humble when, when things are going too, good, too. Good guy, good guy, good player. Um, we're going to keep our ear to the ground on everything related to the quarterback race or maybe the trade down. Uh, I don't think they're going to trade down. Like I said, four picks, maybe even five. That's what I'm hearing. That's what they're going to be trying. Is this a stick up? So the Patriots are going to be making a pick at a quarterback in 12 days. Is it 12, Giardi? 15. Early editions coming up next. Working on the math. <laughs>